Welcome, one and all. And uh, today we're going to be taking time to pause for brain health and cognitive wellness. So, uh, as mentioned, my name is Glenn Finney, and uh, I do brains. I love to think about brains. I love to uh, study how the brain works and uh, how it does a lot of the especially interesting things that humans do in life. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit today about some of the benefits of taking a breath, taking a pause, and how that actually can lead to better brain health, brain function. And I'm going to highlight a little bit in our storytelling on um, how it can also increase creativity. So that's my title slide, and we'll, uh, I will say one of the interesting stories uh, about uh, behavioral neurology and creativity is uh, I learned from my mentor, Ken Heilman, about uh, a lot of the stages of creativity and how the brain functions. And one of the things he uh, emphasized during our fellowship was he wanted us to take time. He wanted us to think. He wanted us not to think. He just wanted us to relax and see what ideas would come to us. And there's a lot of benefits uh, in brain health to taking time to rest, to take a break from some of the things you're doing. And it can really have incredible benefits for brain health. We can see it actually improve brain function. We can see it actually increase our creativity. And it actually can lead to decreasing risks to brain health. So one thing that's fascinating is meditation. This uh, focused relaxation, a, a practice where we take a deliberate moment to pause, to reflect, to be still. And that simple act can have a powerful effect on brain function. There's now been several studies that have shown it having an impact on brain function, but it even changes brain structure. There now are volumetric studies showing people engaged in various types of uh, meditation actually can increase size in certain critical nodes of brain networks. Uh, this includes uh, prefrontal cortex, insular cortex, the interior uh, uh, areas of the cingulate cortex, which is very involved in decisions and, and uh, shifting attention. Also, the connections between different parts of the brain, especially the corpus callosum, which uh, connects the left and right hemispheres of our brain. So, what else can we do by relaxing? Well. We can do a number of creative endeavors, and I'm going to be telling you some stories today. I'm going to be telling you some stories about creativity in the sphere of the sciences. Okay? Uh, now, sometimes people think of creativity as being painting and, and music and, and uh, sculpture, and, and these are all very creative endeavors, but science is a creative endeavor. And uh, here I am, relaxing on the beach, uh, and taking a time to pause. And uh, really, we have had many times in our lives where sitting quietly, uh, not necessarily looking for answers, yet answers come to us. In fact, one of the uh, famous uh, founders of um, neuroanatomy, uh, Santiago uh, uh, Ramoni Cajal, in his advice, to um, researchers, young researchers, uh, said that if you feel like an answer to a question you're working on is eluding you, and you're on the edge but you can't get there, take a break, relax, and the answer may come to you. I paraphrase, but uh, that advice actually can increase your creativity. In fact, there is a whole a phase of creativity. We talk about uh, many phases of creativity from preparation, learning the skills and knowledge you need to uh, work in your creative um, space, 
but we also talk a lot about incubation. Time for your brain to kind of work on these things in the, the background and form novel connections um, in knowledge networks that maybe haven't been created before. And those can be very weak and they need time though. They need quiet to be able to rise above the cacophony of our day-to-day -day existence. So, what are some examples of creativity? Well, uh, one that I uh, bring up is all the way from the third century BC, and that's the original Eureka moment, uh, when Archimedes had a breakthrough. And what was he doing during that breakthrough? He was relaxing in a hot tub. He uh, had been charged with the king to determine whether a crown was truly made of as much gold as they said. But they said, well, you, you can't melt it down, you can't cut it, you got to keep it intact. His, uh, he was a little nervous about this from, by all accounts in the stories because, you know, he didn't want to disappoint the king. But he took a break. He was relaxing in a tub. And as the water was splashing out, as he displaced the water, he realized he could measure the volume and thence the density of an irregular object by immersing it in water and measuring the displacement. That was his eureka moment that came from relaxing in a hot tub. Now, something that maybe um, people in the 2020s can uh, relate to is enforced relaxation, or at least um, enforced inactivity. Uh, and another story comes from uh, the 1660s about one of the truly a genius uh, scientists of human history, Isaac Newton. Well, around 1665, 1666, a plague was raging through London. And Sir Isaac, well, then Isaac Newton, had to leave the city for his health and went to uh, the country. Uh, and uh, during that period, he had a lot of downtime. Relax, reflect, and you've heard the story of the apple falling on Isaac Newton's head, and that's how he had his moment of clarity for uh, gravity. Now, probably didn't fall on his head, but he was actually, you know, relaxing in gardens during much of that enforced period of inactivity, uh, all because there was a, a plague in London, and that led him to move on uh, to the theory of gravity. You know, we've, uh, in the early 2020s, have been through a pandemic. Many of us have been in lockdown for various periods. So I wonder what kind of ideas that maybe people were too busy, too focused on the here and now, to really allow to come forward, came forward during those periods, and, and what we might see uh, going forward uh, come out of those uh, enforced periods of quiet. Uh, during the pandemic, uh, me and a number of my colleagues for brain health actually would engage in a weekly game on Zoom. And during that period, we actually talked about um, ideas about uh, the brain and science and career development. And even though we were relaxing, we were also thinking and percolating. Now, another interesting story about uh, scientific creativity is around the question of benzene. Benzene was a brain teaser in the 19th century. People couldn't figure it out. From, from the way they were measuring it and they had come across these new things, you know, putting together atoms and molecules, nothing was fitting. The structure did not make sense from the measurements they could make. So one uh, scientist, Kukule, he was actually daydreaming. He wasn't focused on anything. You know, some people say he was sleeping, some people say he was daydreaming. But he relates the story that he wasn't even thinking about benzene at that time when an image came to him. An image from mythology. The Ouroboros, the snake, biting or eating its own tail, the eternal circle. And it occurred to him that if the carbon structure backbone of benzene instead of being in a line, the way most people have been thinking about it, was actually in a six-sided circular feature, the carbon connecting to itself like 
the Ouroboros uh, connecting the head and the tail, all of a sudden it made sense. And the benzene ring discovery was a huge breakthrough in organic chemistry. Now, maybe some of you have heard about this guy, Albert Einstein. <laughs> kind of a smart guy. Albert Einstein loved daydreaming and thought experiments. He did most of his work up here before he ever put it to paper. But again, you kind of wonder about some things of enforced, um, maybe not relaxation, but inactivity. When he was young, Albert Einstein worked at the Swiss Patent Office. I can imagine that being a little slow at times. And it was there, though, that the idea for uh, relativity was first uh, uh, percolated and incubated, and led to, of course, the great discovery also of equivalence of energy and matter, uh, leading to a whole new field of physics. And even uh, in my, at least, living memory, uh, we had Kerry Mullis uh, on an endless highway, the Pacific Coast Highway, to be specific, uh, and Pacific. Uh, he was driving one night, late at night, down the Pacific Highway. I don't know about you, everyone uh, been a, had that experience where you're driving down the road and it's dark and you're the only one on the road and it's almost hypnotic. You've got to be careful not even to fall asleep, right? And it was during that period of relaxation that the idea came to him because they were trying to figure out how can we magnify the signal of genetic uh, material to be able to actually study it. And he had realized while he was driving that there were certain bacteria uh, that actually can replicate in hot springs. And that heat, that exothermic climate could actually make for rapid turnover of uh, genetic material. And that's how we got polymerase chain reaction, which is the backbone really of modern genetics because it allowed us to much more rapidly replicate uh, DNA and RNA to study. And it was basically from uh, a relaxing ride on the Pacific Coast Highway. He was a surfer too. Now, one last idea to leave you with is brain health, and that is one of the most uh, quiet ways of relaxing or pausing, which is sleep itself. Sleep is critically important for brain function and brain health. So you need good quality sleep, including all the sleep stages for your memory and thinking functions, your cognitive functions, uh, for your, your general health, but also for brain health. In fact, there is evidence now that um, some of the proteins that the brain needs to clear out are best cleared during sleep periods, including one called, a protein called amyloid. Amyloid is one of the types of protein, and in this case it's specifically one called amyloid beta. It's a type of protein that has been implicated in uh, causing Alzheimer's disease. So restructuring of the brain, clearing of the brain with meditation, sleep, creativity being uh, engendered by uh, relaxing activities or forced Pause. Time to pause for meditation to grow your brain, for incubation to engage in creative pursuits, and pausing to sleep to allow your brain to clear itself and increase its health over time. That's why I'm asking you to take a few moments and pause. Time to think for cognitive well-being and for brain health.